Welcome to part four of Learning Godot. In part three, we created the main scene for our game, and now it's time to tackle the scripting side so that we can start spawning mobs. So in this main node, we're gonna to wanna to spawn mobs randomly around the borders of the screen. And to choose a random spot along that path, we're going to use a path2d. So add that, and we're gonna call this mob path. And now we want to draw the path around there. And so make sure you go over here and you have snap to grid enabled so that your lines will be straight. And then you're going to click this button right here, the one with the little green plus on it. If you hover that says add a point. So it's going to add a point along our curve. And we're going to start in the upper left hand corner and we're going to draw the path clockwise around the screen. Make sure you go clockwise. If you go counterclockwise your path will be pointing outwards and your mobs will spawn and go away from the screen. And that's not good. So we're going to add the first point right here at the corner, second point at this corner, then this one, and then last this one. Then we're going to click this last button here that is close curve and that will just make the bottom left hand corner connect to the top one again. So now we have a closed curve that just traces all the way around the borders of the screen. And now that the path is defined, we want to add a path follow 2D node as a child of the path. And what that does is it's a 2D node that can move anywhere along a path. And so by choosing a random point along the path, that'll give us our mobs spawn location. So we're going to name that mob spawn location. Now let's add a script to our main. And at the top, we're going to create a variable to choose what mob scene to use. So we're going to export packed scene. That's the type of object a saved scene is. We're just going to call that mob. Okay. And then over here, when we see mob, we can just take our mob scene and drop that right into that spot. We're going to add a variable for score. And then in the ready, we're going to use randomize. And what this will do is if we don't do this, then every time we run the program, we're going to get the same sequence of so-called random numbers. And that can be useful for testing so that you can make sure you get the same sequence every time. But this will allow us to make sure that it is, uh, it's random every time and it's unpredictable. We don't need the process function, but we are going to make a new game function. And what that new game function is going to do is set the score equal to zero. It's going to take the player and set its start to the start position position, right? So we, we call the start function on our player. Remember over here on the player, we made the start function and we pass in the position. So we're going to use the position of that start position node that we have. And then we're going to start the start timer. We also need to know when the game ends. So we're going to take our click on our player instance, click on node, and connect our hit signal to the main. And we're going to this time change the name here of the method we want. We're going to change we're going to use the game over function that it's going to make. And in the game over function, what we want to do is take the score timer and stop it. Game is ended, that can stop. And we're also going to take the mob timer and stop that because we don't want to keep generating mobs when the game is over. Now we need to start connecting up these timers. The start timer is going to start the other two. So if we take the start timer and connect its timeout signal, what it's going to do is it's going to start the mob timer and it's going to start the score timer. The score timer, connect its timeout, and every time that happens, we're going to just increase the score by one. Every time a second goes by, 
you get one point. Now in the mob timer timeout, this is going to spawn mobs. So we connect that up and we're going to have a little bit more to do inside of this function. So in here, we're going to create an instance of the mob. We're going to pick a random starting point along the path 2D, and then we're going to set the mob in motion. Now the path follow 2D node, one of its properties is that it will rotate automatically as it goes around. So as it goes around, it's going to turn, and we can use that to set the direction of our mobs as well. So first we'll choose that random location along the path. So we take our mob spawn location and we set its offset. And we're just going to set that to a random number. And since the path is looped, it will just spin around until it finds a random spot. And then we need to create our mob instance. So we're going to make a temporary variable to hold it. It's an instance of the mob. We have to add it as a child because the node won't be executed until it becomes part of the scene tree. So we need to add it as a child of main. So it's part of the scene. And then we're going to use a temporary variable here to get the direction of that path follow node. So we take again our mob spawn location and we're going to get its rotation. We're going to set the mob's position equal to the position of that node. So we take the spawn location's position. And then we want to use that direction to set which way the mob is facing and which way the mob is moving. But we're going to give it a little bit of randomness so that they're not all moving just up, down, left, and right. So we're going to add a little bit of random value to this. I want to add plus or minus 45 degrees. But GDScript, most of its angle functions use radians, not degrees. So 45 degrees would be pi over 4. So we're going to do it between positive and negative pi over 4 to add plus or minus 45 degrees to the direction. So now we know which way we're going. We'll turn our mob's rotation to match that. And then we need to set our mob's linear velocity. This is a property of rigid body 2D that controls the velocity of the object. And we want to set this to a vector 2. And I'm going to fill in those parentheses in a second. But we want to take that vector 2 and we want to rotate it by the direction. So it goes in the direction we want. Now what we want the vector to be is its y can be 0, so it's going to be pointing to the right. But its x is going to be a random number, and it's between the min speed, sorry, the mob's min speed, which we set over when we coded the mob, and its max speed. So somewhere between there. And in the next video, we'll be able to wrap this up by adding our UI, our user interface, to the main scene.